Welcome back, Home Inspection Whispers. Today, I have Mary Lamaster on the show with me. She was on a previous episode where we talked about the business processes. We also have our teeny dog, Finn, here. She carries this dog around everywhere. So if you hear a little dog or you hear his jingle of his list, stop that. He's on the show, too. If you want to see this, you can come on YouTube and check out our teeny dog. So... So today, the first thing that we wanted to talk about is where A Action's going and the new things that we're implementing in our business. And then also, we are going to talk about the workshop coming up. We spent a lot of time, Mary spent a lot of time. We have our first portion of our classes written, and then I still need to write my second class. But I have all the notes down. I just need to literally take my notes and put it in the class. And so the first thing that we're implementing into our into our business is we're actually getting into stucco intrusive testing. If you follow us on Facebook and Instagram, there's a few photos of me going out with my father, Brian Murphy. And then we signed up at the EDI course. I finished my first round, which was the online stuff. I did learn quite a bit. The stuff's a little bit older, but I did learn how to do EFs. We don't have very much EFs in Houston, but it does set me up for hard coat. And we're going to go into Flying up to Virginia at what in two weeks? Um, actually, I think it's next week. Oh, geez, this is the last week of February. Okay, yep. Yeah. So next week, I'm flying up to get my level two certification. So whenever we get into something, we just don't say, "Hey, I'm doing intrusive testing," and then start doing it. Well, you should correct yourself whenever you get into something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I just wanted to do stucco. My and father was telling me about it, and you just I just started doing it. I went took the classes, and then I booked a flight to Virginia, go and get my level two cert certificate and then coming back down and I'm going to start training the whole team on how to do it. So a lot of people over <laughs> overthink he's dead. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people overthink about how to get into something or it, it requires that much too much effort, but it really isn't. The hardest part is just starting and that follows our ma my massive action strategy is like I want to do something and I just start doing it. And if it gets too chaotic, then I just stop. Yeah. Right. And then uh, the next thing that we're going to get into is we have all our team carry zip levels, mm -hmm. uh, but we never we never really drawed maps. We use the zip levels and the smart levelers to just prove that we're right, that the foundation's fine or not fine. Although everyone is trained to draw the map. Who, yep. Mike Gandy. Mike Gandy. Mike Gandy trained everyone on drawing the engineer report. Yep. He came in and he spoke to our team. You can pay him to fly in. Yeah. On his own airplane, which... Oh. He likes to do. He and likes to do. He, Good for him. He likes to fly on yeah, his own Not airplane. Me. Yeah. But if you do my Gandhi, he teaches through RETS, or you can reach out to him. And if he's in your area, he'll stop by and help train your team on how to look at foundations at an engineer point of view, not just a home inspector point of view. And if you pay him enough, he'll fly to your area. <laughs> yeah. If you just honestly, I think you only have to pay for his airplane gas. And then he rents the same truck he actually drives. Does he? I, I think it is. Like, <laughs> it's something yeah. about the truck he rents. He rents the same truck every time too. Yeah. And then, uh, so we're going to add that into our business. And Pete, you can upcharge that. I think uh, my father in the Dallas area is doing about $99. And people just want zip levels shot of their property. It does take a little bit extra time. So I think that's a fair price for a $700 tool and the skill to know how to do it. And yeah. so... And uh, we can actually start implementing that probably next month as soon as we get that team meeting back together. Yes, yeah, so we had to cancel our team meeting because there was an outbreak of influenza in yeah. our office. Yeah, someone went to the office that was sick. The guy, the guy was Who dick. was that? I don't know, but whoever it was was a dick. It was some, <laughs> some uh, blonde guy in a blue shirt yeah. with no eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no eyebrows. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. You have eyebrows. Yeah, we went to, uh, we're, getting a new software that we're looking into. I don't want to say the name too fast because I don't want everyone to jump onto it without me sending them in down a spiral of all these people signing up and, and it not working out. So I'm going to really dive into it and make sure it's working in my own business before I start sharing names of softwares that we're working with. That was a digression. Um, is that a digression? That was a digression. Okay. <laughs> uh, but what we were saying was we had to shut down the office because you were actually the one that got everyone sick. And uh, well, maybe. 
everyone got sick. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we shut it down. And so we had to cancel our team meeting Mm -hmm. because, yeah. Other people kept coming into work in the office sick. And we're like, no, we're going to shut this down now. Yes. We're not going to get our whole team sick. That's right. We sent everyone home. Yes. So next team meeting is in March and we'll talk about stucco and zip levels. Yeah. And then we're also going to implement uh, one of our, the agents that's going to be at the workshop. He's been talking about, you know, we don't say he he's very honest you know he's like you know what we don't re- that's the workshop in april yep the more okay. workshop in april yeah he's going to be there but he talked about how you know he's never really the agents never received a thank you call for the, the referral and we're thinking about adding that into our business where the inspector at the end of the home inspection says they call in they say thank you you know to saying, hey, thanks for the referral. Do you have any questions about the home inspection report? Yeah. Just something that simple, but there, it's it's a way to stay at the top of mind and really add that personal, the personal as- touch, yeah, aspect into the into the business. Yes, because we always say we're a customer service company first, a home inspection company second. Yep. Um, and so the customer service. This sounds counterintuitive to you home inspectors out there, but customer service is actually our main goal. Yep. Uh, and the quality of our inspection shines through via that customer service. Yeah, they work hand in hand together. They do. They really yeah. can't have one without the other. Right, exactly. You can't have clients without either, too. Yeah, that makes sense, too. Yeah, you could be a great home inspector, but be terrible at customer service and you don't have a. That's You're not going to have any clients. That's He's so cute. For those of you who are listening on the podcast, our dog is so very cute and so very stop, small. Stop that. <laughs> stop that. Um, <laughs> But anyways, yeah, so the, those are the new things coming out into A action. It, nothing like super crazy, but the thing is, is what happens is if you don't constantly think about implementing new things into your business or even trying and failing at new things, that happen, that happens to us quite often. Like some one of those things that we're implementing in our business may not work and we won't care because yeah, that's true. it's part of just staying on top. And Well, st- complacency is the enemy of... Oh, how do you say it? Complacency is the enemy of advancement or the enemy of ingenuity. Complacency is just the enemy. (laughs) Okay. There you go. That's easy. There's a saying out there. Google it. Yeah. And uh, um, man, you caught me off guard. What what book did you read that you got that customer service from? That customer service. Oh my God. I've read so many self-help books in the last. It was that. Power of Moments book. Okay. I yeah. can't remember who wrote it. I'll, I'll uh, look it up right that, now. No, that's fine. No, Power of Moments, but that's when we really sat down our team and we talked about customer service and trying to make the moments count. And honestly, like just by you taking the client and showing them where the hot water shut off is or how to shut off the power to the home or change the air filter, that is a moment that the client won't forget and they'll remember you. And they're not going to remember the whole process of everything you did during the home inspection, but they're going to remember something that stuck out during the inspection. It's the power of moments why certain experiences have extraordinary impact by Chip Heath and Dan Heath. Yeah. And Mary took some of that stuff. She talked to me about it and then we talked to the whole team about it. And I I think it made the business uh, work a lot better. It did. And that was actually a referral. That book was a referral from Joe Diasana, who is the agent that's coming to speak at our HIW workshop in April. Wow. See, he's, he's kind of in, he helps us out quite a bit. He, he reads a lot of self-help books. He does. Yeah. He has, I don't know where he finds the time because he's busier. Well, actually he listens to Audible. It's actually kind of crazy. And he listens to him on times two. That makes sense because he talks like on times two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. He told me that. I was like, no, I, I like to listen to bits and pieces of them because what happens is my ADD kicks in as I'm listening to them and I need to take one little chunk, pause it, stop it, and then go in and think about how I can implement that one piece into my business instead of cramming the whole book down and only walking away with maybe a minute of it, right? So I was using breakfast as a time, half hour at breakfast, but then someone decided to start getting up with me and talking to me all morning. Yeah, was that Luke? That was Luke. That was oh. definitely our other dog, Luke, who yeah. just talks to me yeah. all morning, <laughs> and I can't read my books anymore. Yeah, yeah so I don't know who that is. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, we're going to move into the workshop a little bit, and we wanted to talk about what's going to be at the workshop, and the best way that we could really do it do it is go through the schedule of what we have scheduled out. And it, I think it's going to be – like a, an advanced version of a crash course of 
how we operate in a action. And also some of these classes, I feel like are going to help us out because every time Paul Zach speaks, he's the owner of ACC. Yes. And I, I take a little bit uh, like a little small little gold nugget away. So we have Paul Zach speaking there. We have Aaron. Aaron, Fur I actually, you know what? I need to add his name. Okay. Aaron Fur Furman. Forgive me if I said your name wrong, Aaron, and you're listening. Yeah, he's with Guardian Financial, and then Mary Lamaster. She's going to talk about how to do business. Who dat? <laughs> and then, she sounds hot. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have uh, Chris Murphy, me, and I'm going to talk about massive action, and I'm going to also talk about how to do social media. At Wait, this let's workshop. start at the beginning. Okay, we'll talk okay. very beginning. So first of all, if you are a home inspector in Texas, you can get 16... CE credit hours from Trek towards your license renewal mm -hmm. by taking this two day workshop. Yep. So that's nice. Um, second of all, the workshop split up into two sections. Day one is the lecture section. Day two is the workshop session. Yep. Workshop. I need to enunciate better. Um, I also want to add that lunch and uh, breakfast and lunch are included for both days, which is really yum. Because I don't believe in sandwiches. No. Yeah. Um, so the day one is the lecture series. And that is when you're going to have all the guest speakers. So Paul Zach will be there. Aaron Furman. I get, and I apologize if I said your name wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I upset the dog. The dog's upset I said Aaron's name wrong. Um, <laughs> and uh, who else? Oh, Carrie Josephine and then Joe Diasana, who are the two agents that are going to be speaking um, as well. And then of course, Chris and I. So right. the reason why we chose Joe Diasano and Carrie is because they are actually two top producing agents. They're million dollar producers. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not hard to be a million dollar producer, but they sell, I'd say three or four homes a month. Yeah. And we're at, and that's just on the buying side, not the listing side. So these guys are hustlers Yeah, and what we're trying to do with these guys, and we'll talk about it more in the class, but the reason that I want to talk about why we chose them. Okay, brief digression. Yes. Go ahead. But we chose them because they've been with us for seven years mm -hmm. and they work with us for a specific reason. And they're, we're going to allow you to be able to talk with top producing agents. Yeah. You know, and so a lot of people are scared of agents or don't like talking to a home inspectors anyway. Yes. Or they think that agents are out to get them or agents right. are out to blame them for all their problems. Right. And we even had mistakes on their prop properties and we were able to salvage the race relationship or, and they didn't, I mean, I don't think it was ever in danger. They just know that we take care of the things that we mess up on. We kept them in the loop, but anyways, that's the reason why we chose them. Yes. So yes. And they're really fun to hang out with. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're pretty nuts. Yes. One yeah. time, <laughs> we thought it was just going to be one, what was that, empanada? Yeah, we went to like an empanada festival. It wasn't an empanada. It, it, was, it was a Mexican festival. It was in that yeah. corn husk thing. Yeah, but we went. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Whatever but, they are. Yeah, we went there. We literally thought we were going to be there for an hour. And then like six hours later, we were there with Joe and Carrie having margaritas in a Mexican restaurant. Yeah, so. we, we, we bumped into them. Yeah. yeah, it was a good day. It was it was crazy. And oh, and then we ended up booking a flight to Mexico. Yeah, to, with them. With them. Yeah, <laughs> the I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We started out eating Mexican food and ended up by in ourselves. Mexico. Yeah, by ourselves. <laughs> and then we bumped into them. And then we actually we, ended up in Mexico. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Um, so let's go over the, uh, the schedule of yes. day one, day one, which uh, again is the lecture day. And also real quick, what are the dates for this? You know, this <laughs> they're in March. I don't, they're not in March. They're in April, April, April the end of April. Oh my God. Yeah. The end of April. So yeah. it's at the top here. So uh, it's, April 24th and 25th. Yes. And, uh, the first day will be April 24th. And, uh, there we go. Okay. We're very organized here. Yes, I am. Um, so that's the lecture series. We'll start in the morning with Paul Zach. He's going to be doing a talk called Time is Money. And we won't really go too in-depth on what Paul and Aaron are going to say, but you should know they're very good speakers. Yep. They're there to help you build your business. So they're not really there to sell you anything. Although Paul is the owner of ACC, he's not going to be in there and talk about how great ACC is for two hours. Right. There will be a section at the very end of the two days where we're going to let them talk. At the very end of the first day. Oh, the first day. Yes. Sorry, at the very end of the first day where 
they're going to talk about their services, but whenever they're teaching, they're not going to just sit there and talk about ACC for an hour. He's literally going to talk about how to do time management and how he thinks time management works. Yes. Yeah. Um, Then after Paul, we're going to have Aaron. He's going to talk about credit processing. And Chris and I found this out. So much of our money goes through credit card and bank fees. Yeah, that's a lot. It's It's a stupid amount of money. Yeah, it's like a whole salary of someone that you could pay. Exactly. And it's just here and there. You think, oh, 1% off this, 2% off there, 3%. And you're thinking, oh, that's not a lot of money. But then when you actually look at your profit and loss statements, you realize that you're just hemorrhaging bank fees and credit fees. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah, he's going to be talking about that. Uh, and again, he's not there to sell Guardian Financial. He's so. going to teach you how to read a credit card financial sheet. Yes. So that so you can determine where your fees are going or negotiate on it or something. I don't know. I don't want to say too much because I don't. You're you know, not teaching the class. I'm not teaching the class. That's that's Aaron's job. The yeah. third class on day one is building your LLC with Mary LeMaster. I mean, she just sounds really cool. Yeah. So I'm so excited to hear yeah. her speak. That's a, that's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> How about you tell them what your class is about? Yay. Um, so, okay. <laughs> um, so building your LLC, essentially, we're going to break down every step that has to do um, with changing your business from a sole proprietorship to an LLC. Now, what happens if you already have an LLC? That's okay. This business, this business, what? This class is still for you um, because we're going to be talking about the differences between um how you give your employee benefits. There's a lot of legal differences between being a sole proprietor and LLC when it comes to benefits, how you pay your taxes, how you pay yourself, how you can turn yourself into an S Corp or a B Corp or a nonprofit or whatever you want to become, how you get tax breaks, all of that fun stuff. So it's a lot more than just LLCs. Just building an LLC. You're telling all the different types of... All the different quirks and loopholes you have as you're building up your business foundation. Mm -hmm. So this is not about running your home inspection company. This is building, this is, excuse me, this is about building the building blocks of the foundation of your business. Nice. So, and then the next class is bridging the divide between agents and inspectors, which that's a very detailed uh, title of the name. I've attended conferences before. Yeah. And what we did is, is we're going to go over these questions so you can see the questions that we're going to ask them. We don't know how they're going to answer them. We just sent five questions to them, and they're going to think about the questions of how they're going to answer them. But these questions should be answered fairly quickly, and at the same time, you guys are going to be able to ask them whatever question you want, like what marketing attracts you the most. I think that actually might be one of our questions. Yeah, so actually, let me... He keeps saying them. Who he's talking about is Carrie and Joe. Yes. So this is the section with Carrie and Joe. The Property Joes, that's property their name. Joes. Why are they called the Property Joes? Because Carrie is Carrie Josephine and Joe is Joe Diasana. I think that's real, so cute. Real clever. I think it's cute. Um, <laughs> I like it. Uh, so we have, it's a one hour open discussion format and we'll be asking, probably me, maybe Chris, we'll be asking Joe and Carrie these five questions and then we're going to open it up to the attendees. Yep. So the questions are as such. First question. What is your preferred way to schedule a home inspection? Online, phone, text, email, et cetera, and why? Second question, how do you choose your preferred home inspector? Word of mouth, marketing, emails, preferred partners, social media, et cetera. Third question, what impresses you the most during the home inspection? Report software, report review tools, bedside manner, et cetera. Lots of et cetera's in this because we've opened it up for discussion. It'll sound a lot better, trust me. No, I think it sounds fine. Question four. Many agents say that their biggest frustration with home inspectors is that they, the home inspector, makes everything out to be a big deal. What are your thoughts on how the inspector should present problems? And we actually targeted this question on purpose. I know it's going to drive some conflict. Oh, yes. And that's the purpose of this discussion is to have an open discussion about, you know, their perception of what is bad and then what the home inspector's perception of what is bad and then how the client perceives it. So I think that is going to be a really good question. Yes. Number five, how can agents and home inspectors work better together? Yeah, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. one It's like a cats versus dogs, Tom and Jerry type situation. So I think this will be good because uh, Carrie 
is, you know, he's more laid back and relaxed. And he's very thoughtful. And Joe, he's very opinionated and uh, very strong. I, Joe knows what he likes and yes. I admire that. Yes. I mean, I don't think it's bad. I, we're hanging out with him, you know, but I was just want y'all to be prepared. You know what? You're going to get two different opinions on how things should be done. So you can see that not everyone is exactly the same and you're always going to have to adapt to that specific clientele. It's always different every day. Oh, I completely forgot. At the end of day one, we Paul might. Zach, oh, yeah, we Paul Zach comes back. Yep. So Paul Zach's doing an hour class in the morning and an hour class in the afternoon. Uh, he's doing a thing on price shoppers, how to combat price shoppers. And then at the end of day one is Chris Murphy. is uh, He's doing his class called Massive Action. What is your class? It's, it's on much, massive action. It's on massive action, but we also have a five-step process, base bare minimum process that we follow. And I'm just going to walk you through those five steps. And honestly, they are that easy. You, yeah. It's just five steps. You just keep repeating them every day on every inspection and it, and it turns into business. So that's the reason why I'm going to go about that. Massive action. Massive action. Massive action. Chris Murphy's the gas pedal. <laughs> what did you say? The gas pedal. I oh. always say I'm the gas pedal. I did not thought you. I did not think you said gas pedal. What did I say? I, a bad word. Oh, okay. No, that <laughs> um, all right, let's move to day two. So that's the end of day one. Uh, day two is the workshop, the more hands-on day. Yes. So day one's all the talky-talky. Day two's all the worky-worky. Oh, that's that. No, no, don't say that. <laughs> so, um, okay. No. So uh, first section of day one is in-person marketing. And that's two hours. So the first part is me talking about building your scripts to call in for sponsorships. The in-person marketing? Yes. Building your spreadsheets to keep track of your... And I want you to bring your computer today too, because yep. you're going to need your computer. You want, you're going to be building spreadsheets, typing up scripts. And we're also going to be discussing the elevator pitch, which is hour two. So not only will you be hearing how Chris and I do our elevator pitches, which are different. Mine's better, by the way. No, it's not. Whatever. You don't know. People sign up and call me all the time. No. P what? <laughs> that is not true, and you know it. <laughs> yeah. um, building your elevator pitch. So not only will you be writing your elevator pitch, you'll also be delivering it to the other inspectors. And ECS is going to record you. You can either do a voice recording or you can do a camera recording. I know that not every... Not everyone wants to see their softs but on that's, camera. But I mean, that's the part of it is like you get to, you can see how you look whenever you give these speeches because that's how everyone else sees you. That's true. Um, sorry, I yawned. Yeah. Uh, and then the next one is. No, I'm not done oh, yet. Not done. Uh, the elevator pitch is a whole hour to itself because we want to make sure that you leave with your full elevator pitch and then you have this audio or video file so you can watch yourself over and over again. Because as you'll see, when Chris and I give our elevator pitches, we basically black out and give our pitches like, because we've said them so many times, we don't even know what we're saying. Like literally black out and just say yeah, it. Yeah, that literally happens. And I mean, it, it, it fluctuates every time. It's not the same. Every Mine single, is. Like, Mine is same word for word for word. Well, that's boring. No, it's not boring. <laughs> I talk to different people every day. <laughs> yeah, it's different every time, but it's the same basic facts. Um, stop making faces. It's like, funny. <laughs> I can see myself. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> the next one is uh, the social media marketing. And I'm not going to go through. Who's doing that? That's me. Okay. Yeah. Social media marketing. And I'm going to go through. I actually have a set set of rules I follow. Everyone knows how to post something or I'd say more or less, you can at least find from a YouTube video is how to post something on Instagram and Facebook. I'm not going to go through the actual process of posting, but I'm going to go through more of my thought process of the basic rules that I follow mm -hmm. and my strategy for each platform of, because it has to be a little bit different and how I gather my content on site and then how I cut it up for each platform. Yeah. So it's not so much of how to do social media or the idea of why you should do social media. Everyone should just be doing it. The thing is, is my thought processes and my set of rules on how I'm going to, I, I target social media. Yeah. So if an inspector comes in and he or she hasn't made their social media accounts, will you be helping them set them up? That will be part of the last day. The breakaway. The breakaway. Okay. Those are going to be more one-on-ones and the questions will be asked and we'll Answer. just try to 
dive in and knock it out super fast. Okay. And we might need to set up that computer where I can have it on the, the big screen. I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. We're, uh, we got that. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So after social media marketing, there's going to be a little, an hour class on hiring practices. Cause we, when we kind of did polling on what people wanted to learn in this two day uh, event, a lot of people ask for hiring practices. Yeah. So again, yeah. make sure you bring your computer because you're going to be making your spreadsheets, your hiring spreadsheets, your onboarding process, your interviewing process. You're going to be making and setting up all those processes so you can go home and then implement them. Because what I don't want you to do is think in your head, oh yeah, that's a good idea, but go home and forget it. So after, you know what, we need to like do a pre-set up email before and we can add it into my phone calls when I call them to let them know the class is coming up. What they need to have downloaded on their computer. So I use Google Drive for everything. So that's free. Yeah. So Google Drive to, is free. So they just need to set up a Google Drive account. Yeah. If you have a Gmail account, you have a Google Drive. If you don't have a Gmail account, you can set one up in like two seconds. Yeah. So we'll, we'll start off with that. Well, it's, it would be nice for it to be set up so you don't have 40 people asking you questions on how to set up Google Drive. And it saves forever. So it's not like you put it in an Excel sheet and sell the Excel sheet, sheet. <laughs> Excel, Excel sheet, sheet. Yeah. and you go home and your computer crashes and you can't access it ever again. A Google Drive is forever. Yep. We hope until the Russians get it. Yes. <laughs> um, and, so, and then the final is the breakaway. The and breakaway. there's two breakaways happening at the same time. You can either join Chris Murphy, um, he's going to talk about social media. Yep. Or you can sit with the cool kids who are going to talk about business processes. And also, whenever you're talking about the hiring processes, if you're a single man operator, a, sol a solo man, you still need to know these hiring processes because you could want to hire an assistant one day for marketing mm -hmm. or you could be hiring uh, a just phone a, taker or, or, anything. Some, or someone even... Um, helping you out on your own home inspections. You know, you're just tired of bending down and hitting all those outlets and you need someone that have the same goals and the same focus as you do. And that's part of the hiring process. Yeah. You know, so don't think that just because you're a solo man operator, you won't ever need someone. Eventually you might need somebody. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. Back to the breakaways. The breakaways. You can talk about your breakaway first. The breakaway, it's just pretty much just Q&A. The, the entire, social media the, breakaway. The social media breakaway. And we're going to just figure out what the group exactly wants. And if y'all don't have any questions, we're going to just start shooting social media content for you right then and there. Yeah. So we're, it's going to be just fluid. And we're going to just start working on something right away. And we'll have a a green screen setup or just you talking about home inspection processes or selling your business right then and there with, with whatever, you know, <laughs> that's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. It's, it's just like where it falls into my massive action. I, I have a few of my home inspector friends that are actually are already showing up that are pretty decent at social media. So that's nice. They're going to be in the audience and they're going to talk about their strategies and y'all could even start shooting some of that stuff together. So cool. So I read the book called Atomic Habits, and I'll look up the author of that in just a second. But uh, the reason I bring that up is because in that book, the author talks about making processes, setting processes, not goals. And so my breakaway is going to be about setting up your business processes. So you're going to give me a problem in your business, and we're going to set up a process on how to fix it. And process just literally means checklist. I mean, yeah. I have processes, as you probably know, if you watch my IG story or if you've listened to the podcast, Chris and I did last time, I have processes for everything in our business. I've broken every single thing that we do down into steps. Yeah. And so it's not something that just can't be forgotten because, I mean, it's even down to the tool inventory. Mm -hmm. We have broken down the tool inventory, Yeah, the, the full steps of how someone comes into the business. And when it's written down, no one's ever forgotten about or a step isn't forgotten about. We yep make sure it happens. And, and whenever in our coaching program, the people that I send over the processes, I'm like, listen, you think that you almost put like the processes on a pedestal, you know, it's actually that simple. It's just a checklist. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just a checklist. And that book is Atomic Habits, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones by James Clear. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Um, but we were already doing the processes before I read that book. It's just that book kind of validated Everyone was like, oh, Mary's just crazy. <laughs> no, I'm not crazy. No, no, there's, there's, there's reasons for the There's crazy reason things. behind the crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, so. uh, and then I'm starting the book. Oh man, fail. 
but uh, <laughs> we won't worry about that. Really. But we are. He going tried to do a digression I and then digressed from his digression and forgot what he was going to say in both digressions. Yep, that that's exactly that. <laughs> that happened. actually happened it, right now. You heard it here. <laughs> but we are. Me and Isis are going to get together and we're going to try to get everyone a little piece of swag of some sort that shows up to the to the the workshop. So it's nice. So, so what you basically said is everyone who shows up to the workshop gets something. Yeah, they're going to get something. You know, we're going to, we're going to try to do our best to get shirts for everyone. So you'll be getting a personal phone call from me whenever you sign up at about 30, 20 days out. And we're going to get these shirts ordered, get your sizes in and get everybody a piece of swag. So this workshop is April 24th and 25th. Yep. That's a Friday and a Saturday. Yep. It's in Houston, Texas. And uh, it's two ninety nine a ticket. Yes, two ninety nine. Two ninety nine ticket. And if you're from Texas, you get sixteen hours. But we invite everybody. You don't have to be from te- Texas to attend. That's correct. Yep. Um, and then also there is a promo code for the hotel. So if you sign up, um, we will send you the promo code. Yep. Awesome. Yep. And so, oh, if you're in the coaching program, right? No, any. No, no, no. And anyone who stays at the hotel. Oh, sorry. Gets, yeah. My ADD kicked in and I thought about two separate things. Yes. But if you are in the coaching program, you do get a discount to mm-hmm. the workshops too and the, and yes. the future workshops. Yes, that's nice. correct. Yes. Yep. So. All right, cool. So I think we'll wrap it up there. Do you have anything else you want to say? No, I think I'm good. I think Finny's tired. Yeah, he's pretty wiped out. He, yeah, he's that was exhausting. Entire, slept the entire time. <laughs> All right, cool. So thanks again for listening. I know this was a little bit shorter podcast, but I really wanted to get out and get the message out a little bit more about what's in the workshop. I don't know if I expressed the message well enough. And then I brought someone that can speak a little bit more clearly <laughs> and more organized manner about the workshop so more attractive uh, yeah that 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 always works As too. I yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right thanks guys thanks uh, home inspection whispers for ta- uh, tuning in again and the next podcast i don't know what it's going to be but it might be the hawaiian home inspector again oh, he might be coming back that's fun and he's once he's actually dominating out there in hawaii he has another home inspector on another island now which is that is such a crazy business concept to me, you know. So, Chris, do you think we need to take a business trip out to Hawaii and interview him in person? Oh, yeah. We actually, that actually might be in the works. Okay. We're, we might go out there and shoot a blog about how we went hiking and then did a home inspection in the same day. So, well, yeah. he's on the big island. He lives on the yes. big island. So, there's the like actual Hawaii. Yeah, the real Hawaii. The actual yeah. Hawaii. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys, again. Uh, follow us on YouTube, Instagram, social media. <laughs> all of them we actually have our tiktok and josh gibson got thirty two thousand views yes he basically he almost, is that viral do you think that's viral uh, no viral on tiktok's like 1.5 million but okay. he almost went viral it's viral for us yeah. yeah all right catch us on the next one thank you bye, bye.